Okay, so let's see if I can do this video in five minutes. So we're looking at a Venga. I spoke about doing an Avenger video. Um, it will, and I said that I'd try and upload it sometime soon. So this is it. So a I said there was an issue um, regarding a Veng, and I said that it was confused, and I'd explain why I said that it was confused. Now, in the previous videos, I mentioned like and Lam that they were an insurance company. Um, um, who else? Um, Pepco was a retail company. Now, yeah, if you look at a Veng. The first thing is it's group, right? Um, if it's group, you're not always too happy about the idea of group because it makes you think that it's a conglomerate when it might not necessarily be a conglomerate. It's not the same as a holding company. But, but again, I digress. So, a Venn Limited is engaged in infrastructure development. So, it doesn't necessarily make it clear as to what it does, right? Um, it's not the same as Pepco is in retail. So it's clear that we sell retail products. And then they say um, we sell retail products such as electronics, um, housing, whatever, housing material, whatever you want to call it, and so on. So it's clear that this is what you're doing. And then when you go to Pepco, for, as an example, you then find those brands which are Russell, which is a furniture retail shop and um, Bradlow is a furniture retail shop. Pep, which is like a household retail, right? They sell clothes and whatnot. So it's pure retail and you know exactly what it is that they do. So generally you're doing this because you want the people at the top who are managing the company to be experts within that particular field. So you want the people at Pepco to be experts of retail, right? Uh, that's really what you're doing. They need to be experts of retail. They need to know about retail. They need to be in that in that situation. When you're looking at a Veng as a group, the first thing it tells you is it's different companies, which again it's okay, but not the best thing, but it's okay. Then they say it operates through these subsidiaries. Okay, now the subsidiaries remember they're in infrastructure development, so you're not sure whether they're talking about engineering, you're not sure whether they're talking about construction, you're not sure whether they're talking about contracting, you're not sure whether they're talking about architecture. Infrastructure development is not one thing. It's very different to simply retail, where I'm just selling to the public. Then, they then name the the subsidiaries of the companies. So you've got your Grenaker, your McConnell, Dow, your Aveng Manufacturing, Aveng Steel, your Aveng Moments, and, and so on. And when you read into it, for instance, I'll, give, I'll tell you that the Green LTA offers multidisciplinary services across the construction and engineering value chain to its clients in South Africa. Long story short, we do different things. Like if you want me to break it down to simple English, we do different kinds of services within construction and engineering along the value chain. The value chain is, long story short, if I'm a KFC, then I own the KFC branch, the KFC. Then I own the chickens that I need for KFC. And then I own the farm that I have the chickens on. Or not necessarily the farm, but I own the food that I give to the chickens that I grow for the KFC. So I own, so it's the chain of the products basically. Now, if you say in the, value, the engineering value chain to so its clients in South Africa, you're basically saying, I do different services for the people within kind of this field, but all the way backwards. So it's kind of like saying, again, at KFC, what do you do? I service the value chain of KFC. So do you, I mean, what do you do? Pluck the chickens? Do you grow the chickens? Do you breed the chickens? Do you hatch the eggs? Do you make the spices? Do you make the food? Do you own, the, what, what exactly do you do? It's unclear, right? So that's kind of the first issue is, it sounds cool. But it's not it's not specialized. It's very vague. And it's not just that, because they kind of move on and they tell you that it's for South Africa, Mozambique and Mauritius, which is expanded great. And then they tell you Mc, Mc, McConnell Dow is an engineering con engineering construction and maintenance contractor, which is a bit more uh focused. But again, you don't want to be in too many fields. Right, so if you want to specialize, but engineering construction and maintenance contractor. Then you've got a ring that does steel supply, so you, 
gen if you just read off the top of their mind, you think to yourself, okay, so they're in construction, but then they're also in engineering, which is fine, and then they're in steel, so I get the steel from them. They kind of paint that picture, but again, it's different companies, not necessarily within the same value chain. The value chain is in terms of the process, but not in terms of the companies, right? Um, if that makes any sense. And then it goes over there down to um, like a ring steel supplies a range of products to the domestic export market to the steel construction and automotive industries. So now you're going into automotive industries when you're in construction. So now you're moving into cars. Now, the I'm not going to read all of this, but the main point I, I, I wanted to point out here was that the question is what who are the ex who are the experts or what expertise do those who are leading this have now remember you want to have the expertise within the field so if you are running a a a, a fund a pension fund you want to have an expertise in finance or you want to have an expertise in the investments or you want to have an expertise in risk management and as you go up, you're not going to be an expert in all of it, but you need to have your executive as an expert in those. So when you're sitting there, you need to have a risk man, the head of risk management, for instance, or chief of risk management, um, chief risk officer, CRO, which is a new position created. So you have like your CFO, you have your CRO, and those are supposed to be the experts. Um, but you can't turn around and say, I'm going to have these experts and then have different companies and then that what that's going to do is it's going to force the expert to be too far down it's going to force the expert to be um the head of granaka has to be the expert for granaka but at the same time remember the head of granaka is managing granaka so he's at management level so he's not going to be an expert so now what you're doing is you're watering down the level of expertise if again if that makes sense but let's look at shop rights shop rights Owns ShopRite, owns Checkers, they own, um, I think it's Hypermarket or something. They own these different um, retail shops, but they're all retail. So if they're all retail, you have the managers. Oh, I have to leave. You have the managers, and then you have the head of those shops. You have the head of Checkers, you have the head of ShopRite, the head of um, so on and so on and so on and so on. Um, I hope it making sense. But if not, I'll try and restructure it. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm, I'm able to make sense of this. So, and I'll try and slow it down a bit. So, the main problem that I'm seeing with this company, and I'm saying this because, and again, I haven't done a full analysis, obviously, I haven't looked into the actual management and, and the actual, yeah, of, of the company. Um, and that's something that's important that needs to be done before you invest into a company. That's why the, the basic rule of thumb is invest in something you know because it cuts a lot of time out. Um, but I'll get to that. I'll, I'll get to, to that. So if we just look back, it was at about 25 rands a share, all right? Um, that was in 2014. I don't know when all of this happened. I'm just going to assume it happened before that. So in 2014, you had this situation and it started falling. Now, I'm, I'm sure somewhere along the way, they probably gave out articles of some kind of confidence so that people would want to come in, especially around this time here, yeah? so people would come in around 300 share and they'd be like oh no this is what the company's doing they probably said things like we are going to restructure the company and we're going to do one two and three and this is why i mentioned that unless there is an actual fundamental change not an article a fundamental change that it's, it's pointless to just listen to confidence every every spokesperson of a company is going to create some kind of confidence when they come out uh, even if, I mean, Tesla literally did the same thing. Tesla was about a week away from being liquidated, dead broke, zero amount in the bank, having to close down a week away. And when and within that month, when they asked Elon Musk the situation of the company, 
he gave positive information to try and create that confidence and see if they can handle or see whether they can last as long as possible up until they are forced to close down. So no one's going to say, guys, it's bad. No, otherwise you lose your job. So you have to try and create confidence in the market. It's part of your job as a spokesperson, whether you're the CEO, whether you're the um, CPO, whatever the case is. So getting back to the point, the point here is that uh, I'm sure along the way they gave some kind of confidence, some kind of spiel about what they're doing within the company, but there was no fundamental change because the reason for the poor performance of the company had not necessarily been identified and acknowledged. So for that reason, rather than actually fixing the problem, you're just creating confidence and hoping that it just kind of fixes itself. Uh, some companies do that, okay? Um, African Bank even did that. But that's another story for another day. So getting back to the point here, that that definitely along the way happened. If you were to read back from 2014 along to 2017, yeah, about 2017, early 2017, you probably would have found a whole lot of positive information about this company, um, whatever information you could of the company. Now, getting back to um, the issues that I had, remember I mentioned that they said that there were infrastructure development along the way when you're reading through then various countries, which is fine. But again, when you're expanding, it becomes a bit of a pressure because if if you're in one field and you're expanding and you have different headquarters within different countries or continents, you have to make sure that they're performing the way they're supposed to be performing. So if you are, um, if you have like a Ven Krenaika LTA, and they're doing different things in construction and engineering within the value chain, and it's not clear, and they're doing that in South Africa, Mozambique, and Mauritius, it's a bit of an issue. It's kind of like saying we're doing different things in different countries. Then McDowell is, McDowell is, in, is in construction, maintenance, um, and engineering, um, which makes a bit more sense, as I said earlier. And then having still supplies products to the domestic, uh, and so on and so on. Um, and then having manufacturing, manufacturers and supplies, construction products to the construction sector, services and engineered solutions to mining water oil and construction clients and rail construction and maintenance services to the transport sector of in capital partners is an, is the investment and structured financing arm of a thing let me make this clear because i said i wasn't going to read it and i did so let me make this clear long story short these guys are a group not a holdings because generally what you want to do with the holdings is you want to be within the same sex as I explained with ShopRite and PEP and so on. ShopRite uh, being in retail, PEP being in retail and so on. Sanlam being in, 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 in insurance. So here you've got partial engineering, you've got partial um, vehicle, uh, not vehicle, uh, yeah, part automation for parts. Um, then they have part engineering, part construction, um, and then you've got service delivery of various parts within that field of engineering and construction. Then you've got construction in different sectors, ranging um, from the domestic, uh, uh, sorry, so within steel construction and automation, basically cars. And then on top of that, they've got manufacturing plants, so it's not focused in any way. Then on top of all of that, you've got more construction and service delivery that's engineered to entirely different fields of mining, water, oil, and gas clients, right? So which means you need to know about that field for your clients. Then they get into railway to get into transport. And the point I'm making is really to fix this. The first thing they'd have to do is they'd have to identify what company they are. And really, this is the type of company they're supposed to be, a steel manufacturing company, basically. Because really, that's, I mean, they're supposed to be, or at least if they really want to do the whole um, vehicle, vehicle, why do I keep saying vehicle? 
if they want to do the whole um, value chain proposition, what they would what they should be doing is they should be in construction. So yes, we're in infrastructure, but the idea should be we're in construction. And then they work along the construction value chain. So what that means is they have um, an engineer who does construction engineering, or if there's such a thing, structural engineering, there we go. Um, they have structural engineering. And then all under construction. So you basically have a construction company. And then from the construction company, you've got structural engineers which are needed in the construction company. And then you've got um, like steel providers, right? So like, yeah, let's just call them steel providers or steel manufacturers. And they're part of the value chain. So you have the construction, then you have the steel manufacturing, and they provide the steel for the construction. Then you've got... Um, what else am I missing? Because they've um, construct. Yeah, that's about it. And then if they really wanted to move on, then they could go from like steel to say, well, what else are we going to get into? And they just move along. The so the aim then becomes a matter of we would be able to construct, say, a mall. But when we're constructing a mall, we're going to make it cost effective for ourselves by having steel that we constructed or by a particular company that that we are a holding company of then you go a step further a step back and you say well maybe we even have like a mining company which mines the steel and then that steel is then refined or manufactured so now it's a matter of if i want the steel for the construction i've got the construction i want the steel i've got a company for the steel then i've got a mining company which supplies the steel which is from a construction that's a value chain basically um, but what they're doing is they're dibbing and dabbing in various places so that they're always looking for clients. And so that's, that's why I say they're confused because it's unclear. Like if someone says infrastructure development, they're basically saying if it has to do with infrastructure, we're there. That's kind of like saying, um, that's kind of like ShopRite saying, we sell anything. If you want to, if you want to, if you want a car, you can come to Shoprite. If you want a bike, you can come to Shoprite. If you want a suite, you can come to Shoprite. No, Shoprite says we're a retail, and what do we retail? Then they say, well, it's got to be home based. So they'll say, well, we'll start off and retail, say food, for instance. Then they'll say, okay, well, we've got the food down. Then we'll kind of expand a bit outside of food to maybe um it is actually mostly food then they might say a few toys or kind of like convenience food so now we're going from grocery food to convenience food so if you want to come in and buy a pie we've got that we're still under food that's one company on the side then on another side they still under retail but then they say we do shop right furniture so we're only selling furniture if you want food go to the other shop right if you want furniture you can come to us what furniture do we sell we sell home based furniture not office so you'll find the tv you'll find couches you'll find fridges you'll find furniture that is for a house so that's specializing so that you can become an expert in that particular field right now as i said if you go if you go if you go to a company and you say to the CEO, remember, you, you got to rise up the ranks, right? So you need to be an expert at some point. And then you move up to up the ranks. And when you move up the ranks, you then take on management positions. So you become less of an expert practically because you need to focus on the management of the business. But you can still keep up with the experts who are working practically. And then as you move up, you move up to focusing purely on the business. But to the average person being an expert within that field because that is the field you're working in specifically. At this point, you don't know how if it's if it's if it's based in the group, you don't know who the CEO of a van came from and where the expertise is in. Is it in, in construction? Is it in engineering? Is it in engineering um was it in the value chain? Is it in um 
Is it in exporting markets or exporting steel for construction? Is it for automotive industries? Is it for the mining of water? Is it for the oil? Is it for the gas? Or, 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 or is that person simply from the financing? So there's like an investment structured financing arm of a bank that's based on investments that has nothing to do with infrastructure development. So it was bound to be in trouble. It was, it's like a bad version of Berkshire Hathaway, right? Now, the reason I say it's a bad version of ha Berkshire Hathaway is because Berkshire Hathaway has lots of companies. But what Berkshire Hathaway does is it first says, I want to make a long-term view. I want to work on the cash flow and I want you to manage the company yourself. I don't want to take over the company, which is different to what some other hedge funds do. That's why it still works because what, but what Warren Buffett does is he buys the company, but he doesn't control it. He just simply buys it on paper, excuse me, and he just allows it to run. So that's what he does. In this case, again, I don't know if they try and run it or not because I haven't read anything about the management, but it's, 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 and it's not diversified. So on Warren Buffett's version, on Warren Buffett's ideas, he's diversified. Well, He's not technically, he's diversified, but he's not trying to diversify. Um, but that's another story anyway. So the point I'm making here is that this is, it's unclear as to what this company actually does. Someone's going to say, how about their infrastructure, infrastructure development, but then what section of infrastructure development? And don't reread this <laughs> to me, verbatim, right? Um, you need to be able to kind of say, what does CMH do? They sell cars. Which cars? Various brands. They don't focus on one particular brand. So what does VW do? They focus on VW. What does Toyota do? They focus on Toyota cars. Uh, so that allows that person then to become an expert on VW, an expert in Toyota, um, and so on and so on. So that was my first grudge with the idea of Event Group Limited is if they really want to if they really want to do this, either they'd have to sell these companies out and restructure it so it's clear that they're actually a steel company, or they would have to work on being a value chain company and remove some of these because some of them are just redundant, and they'd have to first go back and see whether they're within infrastructure, whether they're in construction, whether they're in steel mining, or whether they're in steel manufacturing, and then work from there. Um, because even construction is difficult. So I've heard. I'm not in the construction industry. So that's a wing group limited. Now, again, I haven't written the management. A lot of people will say, uh, which we've, we've obviously heard, are like, well, it might go up two cents, three cents, like it did here. I want to, I want to sell it at this point. I want to do this. I'm hoping they have very short term views and that's where things go wrong. And the person says, it's cheap, it's going to bounce. We're not realizing that the reason that the company is falling is because fundamentally, and when I mean fundamentally, not because of news, but it means at a basic level, the company is not going to function because it's somewhat structured wrong, it's created wrong, or it's grown the wrong way. It's kind of like if Sanamo to Sandy start buying, um, real estate and you'd be like well why is it buying real why is it buying real estate because it's an insurance company not a real estate company and then they buy a car garage and you say but why are you buying a car garage what interest and what expertise do you have in car garage and they go back and they say well we're an investment firm so we're investing in real estate we're investing in it wouldn't work out <clears throat> because again the person coming up would if you came up from the car section you wouldn't have insurance if you came up from insurance you wouldn't have the car you wouldn't understand the margins on cars you wouldn't understand the margin on real estate so eventually sunlam would fall so that's why i i i i have mentioned that then personally i would run for the hills i wouldn't touch this as as jamie diamond said i wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot rod not until they can fundamentally fix restructure the company itself so that even if it's a matter of let's just remove all of these 
unnecessary groups created as one group of a Vang group limited fine or a Vang limited and restructure Vang limited as a Vang limited and then have departments or have it as a group remove these and restructure or, re or rebrand the groups as this is a steel mining company this is a steel manufacturing company and this is a construction company then you then go back and you say in terms of construction construction i need someone who's an expert in construction i need someone who's an expert in steel manufacturing i need someone who's an expert in mining then i need someone who is an expert in the management of a company which is going to be difficult because it's three different fields but then you go back i need someone who's an expert in the management of um maybe just construction or the management of a company who understands at best the the the, the basic levels of construction and steel manufacturing and so on right as a ceo um that that could be something that could work but hey i'm not i'm not i'm not the ceo anyway as a, as you can see it's leading on to 30 minutes and I'm just proving that you can't just read an article that's like a paragraph long and think it's a great idea to buy. You need to consider all of these things. Otherwise, you'll you'll do what is called catching a falling knife. And you'll you'll forever be putting in tens and hundreds of rands and losing. Long story short, you'll be gambling. So it went up to three cents. So I'm sure person's like, hey, it went up 50%. But the question is, were you able to sell? like 50 percent um did you have the trading volume oh that that's six million did you have a few bought remember if you if you put in 10 rands that's i don't know how much that is that's like three so it's a 30 cents is like three cents a share 30 cents for 10 three four hundred 30 bucks for three thousand right so 30 bucks for three thousand that's bam there how many people are trading that right um and then if you put 300 bucks if you put in 3000 bucks you you're half of the trading volume if you put 3000 rands worth of them so you want to you want to avoid them if you want to if if you can sit there and say i can be the trading volume right if i can put in 10000 rands and i am more than half of the trading volume then you're in trouble um then you're in trouble because it means literally you become the market of that company but for that day but but that i digress that's that's that goes back to a video that i made about why volume is important in what are called penny stocks um so where was i before i got ex before i got all, all oh there we go so they have a 581 million market cap which is cool it's fine they have a negative EPS, which isn't always the worst considering the circumstance. On top of that, if you want to get into a construction company, personally, I would say first look at a construction company that was doing okay up until 2020 or 2019, where you would argue that it was affected by our economy and that it was affected by the situation and that fundamentally it's a strong company. Um, that's the first thing I'd say they haven't had dividends since 2012 right so this was way back 2012 was like eight years ago right so for eight years they haven't had dividends now why are dividends important if a company is giving out dividends and it stops giving out dividends you then have to figure out why the company is giving out stops giving out dividends because that means something's changed um so either it has to be investing so it has to say, for this year, we're not giving out dividends because we want to reinvest them into something else or something's probably gone wrong. Um, it can't not give dividends for like five years because then it's acting like a growth stock. Now, some companies don't give out dividends, but they reinvest money. So they are focused on growth and not on giving out dividends, which is okay. If they focus on growth, the company has to grow its share price over the next five years. So it can't have a share price which is somewhat stable over five years, somewhat stable, um, and no dividend. It has to either be growing or 
it has a dividend. Otherwise, it means a company is not really growing, right? It doesn't have free cash. If the, if the share price is growing, then it means they're not giving a dividend because they're focused on growing the company. Or the company is doing okay and we're giving you dividends. If I can't give you dividends and I'm not growing the company, then chances are the company is not growing or there's something wrong. So it's been eight years. No dividends. Again, it's another red flag, right? Uh, this is pure volatility. Okay. That's just pure volatility. Um, yeah, you can just kind of dream and say maybe, maybe if I'm lucky, it'll get to two rand a share, and I can add hundred x my money, so I can put ten rands in, and I come up with a thousand or something. Um, so moving on, moving on. Then, uh, so we know they have an, a market cap. Uh, there we go. That's the next part, right? They have negative profit margins, which basically means that they're losing money. or oh, They're not making money on their margins, which means they're not really profitable. Operating margins are not there. Um, return on assets. For an infrastructure company to have negative return on, on assets is a bit of an issue. Uh, negative returns on equity as well, which basically means that their debt is piling up. If their if their uh, equity is dropping, they have fourteen point one eight billion in revenue, which is good. Okay, it's a construction company, so it's relatively expensive. So it's good. They have a gross a gross uh, profit of eight hundred eighty million, um, and then net income AVI of negative eight hundred twenty eight. Um, then they have a balance sheet. Of 1.6 billion in total cash, which is nice. That's a lot of cash. It's some nice cash, and then a, a total debt of 2.8 billion. So, excuse me, their debt is almost double their cash. Again, it's not always the worst thing because it also depends on the company. So sometimes you might find that you'll think that's horrible, only to find that you're looking at a real estate company and it's dealing with debt anyway. And it's living off the cash flow and the real estate is the investment so they're working on um building up the equity over time so again it depends on 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 the company it's not always uh, a one size fits all but in this case i'm not particularly happy for a company that's for eight years hasn't given out dividends um share price has been dropping uh, and their debt is still doubled so i don't quite see what's going on in terms of what what's happening with the money, I don't. And it's not that you suspect that they're doing something wrong with the money, but rather that not enough money is coming in for them to be growing the company. Um, and they don't have dividends, obviously, not since twenty twelve. So really, uh, to me, the 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 um financial stone look great. And then going back to dividends. Right, so now this is what I was talking about. In 2000, they had dividends of 18 cents. Okay, um, in 2001, they had dividends of 22 cents. In 2002, 27 cents. 2003, 30 cents. 2004, 14 cents. You think uh, something went wrong. 2005, 23. 2006, 38. So you're thinking it's going well, right? 2007. 2008, 2009, 2010, 2010, 2011, then all of a sudden in 2012, it goes from 1 rand 45 cents to 60 cents a share. So the dividends are cut by like a half. Well, they are halved, if not less actually, because that would have been like 93 cents. Is it? No. 70. Would have been like 72, 73 cents. So it's cut by more than half. Now, if in 2011 your dividend is 145 and in 2012 your dividend becomes 60 cents, that basically means that if, again, I'm just going to throw out random figures, but it means if the yield of the company, in other words, the dividend yield by percentage was 6%, it means it was instantly the following year cut down to three percent. If it was cut down to three percent, 
the company, and this is what I was talking about, the company would then have to explain why it's getting cut down to, to down to 3%. So what that means is, again, I apologize for the noise, but they would have to explain why it's cut down to 3%. Now, it goes back to my point, which is either they would have to say something like, well, we're cutting the dividends from 6% to 3% because we want to reinvest part of the profits um, back into a particular project, which we see as being lucrative in the future. That's understandable. Or we cut down the profits by half because maybe there was a particular situation, right? A once or situation. Okay. So at this time, there was probably some kind of dividend, not dividend, my mistake, there was some kind of confidence boost. But you go back and you say, well, if that happened from 2012, and then from 2012 all the way up to 2019, there were no dividends. That means whatever the situation they had was, probably got worse or never got fixed, to the point where they just stopped giving dividends. If they stopped giving dividends, then the question is, when they stopped giving dividends, did they grow the company? If not, then what happened? If you're not giving dividends and the company is not growing, then I have to conclude that the amount of money that was coming in originally has stopped coming in. So now we're starting to identify the fundamental problems within the business. Um, but again, that's that's another video for another day. Another day. Anyway, um, I'm sure by now you're tired and you're thinking, wow, this guy won't shut up. Uh, and thank you for sticking around for this long. Total revenue, I'm sure it's clear. You can just see it on your own. And you've got a balance sheet, which has been dropping uh, over the years. Um, the liabilities have also been dropping. The equity has also been dropping, which basically tells me that the either the depreciation of the assets has been depreciating faster than the liabilities have been dropping. Yes, the equity has been dropping. Um, I guess again, I'm not clear on that. And then lastly, the cash flow. And this is what you want to look at. See, cash flow is horrible. Went from negative 622 to 430 million to negative a billion to 270 million so the cash flow is horrible so there i don't see why you'd want to go anywhere near this company um that's just besides other stuff that we haven't looked at but for now that's what i'm gonna say um yeah i'm hoping that this did provide a lot of value i'm sorry for having such a long video uh just play it again and ask questions and yeah let's go say let's go make some money cheers